Hello everybody, Darren here, and welcome back to Satisfactory. Now in today's episode, we're going to be building a starter modular frame factory that will also produce some extra iron plates, some rods, and screws. This is going to help us complete all of the tier 2 and 3 milestones all at once, setting us up for steel production in the very next episode. This factory will be completed this episode and has a full working production chain, floor plan, and power guide that you can find in the description. So if you like the idea of that and you want to see future builds from me, please do consider liking the video and subscribing so I can continue investing so much time in all the pre-planning stuff. Now very quickly, before we actually start, I just want to reflect on the previous two videos, but if you're just here to learn how to do modular frames, then you can just use the timestamps to skip ahead for the first couple of minutes. Let's begin. Alright ladies and gentlemen, you find me just outside of the coal power facility here in the depths of Blue Crater. I just wanted to touch on a couple of things to do with this build regarding the previous two videos before we get into the meat and potatoes of today's episode, the modular frames. And on that topic, it should be noted that this series is designed overall to be a series of standalone episodes, so you don't have to have watched the previous ones to get into it. So if you want to know how to make modular frames in a relatively easy and efficient way, this is the video for you. And in future, if someone's looking how to do trains, drones, oil, they don't have to see a nasty episode number that says episode 150 and think, geez, do I have to watch 100 hours of content just to figure out how to do something? No, you should be able to find the video and it should stand on its own. But to those who want episode numbers in case they're getting lost or they're hopping around, check the playlist. That's what playlists are for. There's a series of episode numbers in the playlist and it's ordered sequentially. So hopefully people who are following along that way can follow along. So circling back around to the two previous videos, the thing I wanted to mention is that, well, I'm sorry. It's quite an ambitious build, I threw beginners really in at the deep end, and then I made some mistakes along the way, which can leave a sour taste in people's mouths. Although, nobody actually really said that, but I would feel that way if I was following someone. And then, the next episode, they told me like, oh no, you gotta redo that, because they made a mistake. I'm supposed to be taking care of the mistakes for you and the planning and all of that, so that's just my bad. I really do feel bad about it. The logic of the build has always been sound. That's not a problem, but the layout and the alignment, that was messy. And it is a big build and everything, but still, shouldn't have happened, especially so early on. I feel like we're just going to filter a lot of people because of that, which sucks. But anyway, to somewhat remedy that, if you're in that position and you've made it to this video and you were struggling with the previous two, I'm giving out the save file. You can just download the save file. You need to be on update 8 to use it, but if you're on update 8, the save should work, and then you have my power facility and everything that comes along with it there for you to either reference, to copy into your own world, or just to continue from where I am, if you prefer. You know, So it's all up to you, whatever you want to do. Uh, hopefully, that somewhat remedies, remedies it, because things had been changing, and I just feel really bad about that. So I'm happy to give out the save. You don't need to be a channel member or anything, and you just have to check the description to get it. whatdarrenplays.com slash satisfactory. That's where all my files go. So, really quickly here at the beginning of the episode, I do just want to touch on one or two other changes that I made. Alright, so, the thing that I wanted to mention is that the clock speed of these generators has to change. So I'm just going to hop up here real quickly. You can see the rows of generators are now in place. I still haven't even added all of them yet. I did as much as I could based on the rotors and reinforced plates that were at my disposal. So effectively, what we've got here is 88% clock speed, but I've added the .8888 onto it. So previously it was just 88, now it's .8888. So if you do that for every generator, you consume all of the little bits of extra coal that I was leaving over. I think when I did my initial calculations, that's what I had written down, but for some reason during the episode I just said 88, not 88.88 recurring 8. So, in doing that, it actually doesn't consume any more water or anything, it should all be totally fine, still 40 per minute for every machine, but it will consume pretty much all the coal, so that you get a nice looking belt where your coal is just continuously running along it. Yeah, that's what you like to see. People were saying, I don't want my belt to stop starting. It's not going to happen. Don't worry about it, right? So 88.8888%. And then we're utilizing pretty much all the power we should be. What that gives us is a very clean power network of 2400 megawatts production. Very clean. Love that number. Much better than the 2376 I think I was giving you. So now we have 2400 clean. Uh, the capacity is 2640, and that's because I've got some biomass burners hooked up that aren't firing right now. So, currently we're actively producing 2400 from this coal facility. We're actively consuming 530 megawatts with a possible consumption of 630. So that's interesting, right? There is a discrepancy of almost 100 megawatts in terms of power for machines that aren't firing right now. So we're going to go back to grassy fields and figure out why. 
So what I want to fix is these yellow lights. These are stalled machines. So here along the bottom, so we've got our production 2400 megawatts. We have our capacity 2640. That's because of the biomass burners. We have our max consumption. So if all our machines turn on and consume power, they could consume 632. So we're well under, you know, where we need to be. So that's totally fine. But our consumption, that's our active consumption right now, is 551. So that means there's about 80 megawatts of machines that aren't firing. And here's obviously a bunch that aren't. So what we'll do is we'll just stack this on top, do the very same thing, and store up a bunch of extra concrete. That gets rolling, that turns on that machine, that gets rolling, so that turns on then the subsequent miners as they look to take on more stuff. And that should bring our network back up to almost where it needs to be. Still a little bit of a discrepancy. I think that's going to be for two things that I can think of. One is that our awesome sink is there, but it's not actually doing anything. So it's just sitting there potentially consuming power, but it's not consuming right now. So what I could do is just open this up, throw in all of the iron plates, for instance. And once they roll in and this gets going again, that will then activate on the network. All right, so that's going in. And that brings that orange line more up in line with the blue line. You want them to be the same. I do, anyway. You don't have to, but I like to do that. So the very last thing, then, I think that's off about it. And by the way, I'll just pick the rest of these plates up. Basically, just take a few of them back up again. Uh, the thing that might be off now would be the water extractors, I think. Oh, my God. Those little bastards to come back. Is there another one nearby? No. Alright, so if you remember, we built temporary coal up here. And there is a water extractor attached to that. This whole area can be torn down now, so that's what I'm going to do. Alright, so I've cleaned up the coal generators. I've also removed some of the biomass kind of conversion area I had. Uh, just trying to declutter the place just a little bit as we look to eventually move out of this place. So our consumption line is now 598.2 and our max consumption is 598.2. Point two, which means everything that we've built is firing and that's a good feeling okay so what we're gonna have to do now is work out what we're gonna need for our modular frame factory before we actually get started I wanted to go over the production rates that we have currently globally per minute so we have 18 iron rods 50 iron plates zero screws the reason I mentioned screws at all being zero is because we do produce some but it goes into another machine and gets consumed 70 concrete uh, we previously actually had 50 concrete, and I added just one limestone node, the one right next to the coal facility in Blue Crater. That's also producing now 20 extra concrete for us. 60 wire, 30 cable, 5 reinforced iron plate, 2.4 rotors, and 0 smart plating. Today, by the end of this episode, we should be increasing iron rods from 18 to 38, iron plates from 50 to 70, screws from 0 to 120, and we're adding the additional 6.666 modular frames. None of our other numbers will be falling down. We're just adding on to things. For that, what we're going to need today is 18 constructors, 8 smelters, 8 miners, and 5 assemblers. And that's going to give us a total power cost of 219. We're also going to need for storage about eight storage containers. So over on the right-hand side of the screen, we now have a list of all the things we need. I've actually got pretty much everything, but I'm going to have to make the portable miners. But the first step is going to be building out the foundations. So load up your inventory with concrete, with iron plates, and let's go visit our site. All right, so this is going to be the site of our chosen modular frame factory. So there are eight impure iron nodes around me here in the southwest of Grassy Fields. So this is exactly where I am on the map. That's our hub. That is the Blue Crater Coal Power Plant. And here we are out in this little outcropping right on the edge of a big cliff with our eight coal deposits. So I'm just going to go clear all of these top bits and uh, then we'll resume and put down our foundations. All right, so in testing out a few things, just to make sure everything would go right, it's now turned to nighttime. But hopefully the place is bright enough that we can start anyway. So I've cleared the top layer of deposits off of the iron nodes themselves, and we're going to align ourselves now to the world grid, which went super smooth before. But I've learned. So what we're going to do now is face north, and I'll just look up so we can put the floor plan on screen. Been hard to work on this floor plan. A lot more information is packed into it. So just to give you a quick idea of what's going on, 
The floor plan now faces north, so as long as we're facing north, it's aligned the same way, okay? So hopefully that kind of lets you orientate just a little bit. Still have to work out the height and everything. So the M symbols are where the deposits are. They're miners, right? That's where the miners are going to be and where they're going to be facing. The S's are smelters. The C's are constructors. The A's are assemblers. And the B's are storage containers or boxes, because I often just call them boxes. We have the dimensions being shown for each kind of compartment of the build. So I try to break it into rectangles just to make it simple to follow along. The inner walls don't actually really exist. It's just the outer ones, but we'll, we'll see that. Just think of the foundations though. So the grid, every grid is a foundation, okay? So we're gonna start with the main central big body here, which is a 17 by 14 foundation. That's 17 across and 14 deep. So 17 from west to east and 14 from south to north or north to south, whatever you wanna think. And then it's by 22. The 22 is in meters. That's the height that we will be going up to uh, for the ceiling. The actual foundation was built on the floor. So let's get started. We know that we're trying to align with one of the deposits here, right? The M is right next to the edge of our line. So we'll grab a foundation. Foundation two meter, hold control to snap it onto the world grid. Yeah, so we're nice and aligned. And you can actually tell it's aligned because it's facing straight north. Uh, so we're just gonna move that forward now all the way over to the deposit. Pretty much all the way over to the very edge we can get to, right? So, to there. And then we're gonna go one, two, three, and what is it? 14. So we'll go all the way down to 10. And then add on four. All right, and that's where we end. We end just at the base of this cliff, pretty much. Facing out that way. So that's our first line done. So just to check this right we'll put down a miner or just look at a miner so that's where it would go so obviously the deposit creeps over the edge but the m stands for miner so this is where you can see the miner fitting in this gives you a good idea of the spacing at the back of the miner so hopefully we're nice and aligned with our first row let's do the second row so this has to now come out to 17 so this already counts as one so we need 16 from here on so that's 10 so we're you know, effectively at 11. And then we have to go out to 5. No, sorry. <laughs> 6. Because we're looking for 17. Yeah? And just to make sure that that's correct, I'll just trace this all the way down, holding control. There we go. 17 foundations. Alright, that's 17 deep. Alright, so that's going to be our first area. I'm just going to now break out the chainsaw. And we're going to do some land clearance. All right, so the sun is coming up again, rather nicely, rather timely. We've got our first room done here. If we face north, we know that it is 17 across and 14 down. Now we have to add on a couple extra little additions to it. Not too difficult for this first bit. So we're gonna count in by three, one, two, three, and then start here. And we're gonna bring this over five, just like that. And then we're gonna start here and bring it in three. And then bring this over a further eight. Well, really just all the way to match its buddy. Alright, so that little addition there, that's a 9 by 3, right? So 9 across to there, and then 3 deep. 9 by 3, that's a little add-on, and this is a 5 by 1. Okay, so super simple. Uh, next, we'll add on a bit more of a complicated area, which is just down here. So we can count in from this side, one, two, and three, and then we start here. And this has to go, I think it's eight deep. Yep, so just past the deposit, obviously. This could just go all the way. So just through the rock or as far as it'll go is fine. And that can basically happen for everything now. Just bring this all the way in line with its original. There we go. Some of that will be outside. We'll, we'll deal with that in a moment. All right, so now we have to build up the final area up there, which is a 5 by 8. But it's 14 meters off the ground is where we need to get to. That's what the plus 14 means. So let's start with that. So in order to do that, we're going to start with a wall, a 4 meter wall. And we're going to go up by 2. Then we're going to add a 1 meter. 
and bring that up by two. So that's two meters. So that's 10 in total with another four on top. So four, four, one, one, four for a total of 14. Then we'll just go up to the top area. This is where our deposits are and that's where our wall is. We'll just grab another two meter foundation and we can now bring this across. So I didn't actually check where we're starting. We should be starting here, really. Let me just get rid of some of these bushes out of the way. All right, we're starting here at the very edge of the, the first line we ever drew, right? The edge of the building. So this has to go, so that's already one, I think. Well, the way we can figure this out actually is we need to just go as deep as this line here. So if I just put this down here, just even just, just temporarily as a marker, we know that's as far over as we have to come. So we'll start here. Bring this all the way over, and we just know that we have to match the one that's there. So the, the dimensions are written in the floor plan, that's just because being down on the ground is a little tough to count that, but you can basically see that it's now got to come over, what, five, I think? So that's one, two, three, four, and five. So just a little bit of this is going to be creeping out on the edge. All right, there we go. Just filling it in. All right, so just to count that up right now, so that's gonna be one, two, three, four, five. And then we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. See, yep, five by eight, there it is. And that's raised appropriately. All right, great, so that's foundations. That's all the foundations done. Hopefully that's relatively straightforward. The next thing is going to be doing the miners and the smelters. So I'm going to put down some guidelines so we can all follow along a bit more easily. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so similar to what I did in the second video for the coal power plant, I've decided to color code the foundations so we can see exactly where things are going to go. Super helps with planning and color coding. It means that we can distinguish between the different types of machines. Yellow is for the miners, green for smelters, orange for constructor, hot pink for assemblers, and then kind of purple for the storage containers. So it makes it super helpful. And these watchtowers are just purely for me to... I don't think he saw us. Uh, they're just purely for me to kind of get a bird's eye view of the situation on the ground. So let's get to it. Let's start putting down the miners and smelters. Now remember, this mirrors the floor plan, which you can go download, view at your leisure at whatdarrenplays.com slash satisfactory. There's no ads on that website or anything. It's just purely a place for me to give you one link to send you to all that kind of stuff. Actually, thinking about it, it brings you to a Google Drive that just lets you download things. Um, so don't worry about going to that website or clicking that link. It's totally, totally fine. Also, if you're feeling generous, maybe throw down a like on the video for all that effort, huh? Some would say I deserve it. I wouldn't say that, but some might say. All right, let's get to our second thing in the to-do list, miners and smelters, right? We know where all the miners have to go. Should be easy enough. So we just whop this around. You'll notice on the floor plan as well, there's a little direction sticking out of the letter. That gives you an idea of where to face these. All right, and obviously some, the way they're not aligned on the world grid, miners and deposits, it means that they're not going to necessarily line up with the foundations very nicely, but that's just the way it is. Uh, so this one's going to be facing that way. And I think I have them all facing at right angles, so that should be easy enough to kind of work out as well. Now, if you're not finding the deposit, just delete one of the foundations, and that lets you see the iron beneath it and lock them down that way. All right, now if you're wondering how did I do the colors on the ground, if you just press X, you go to your customizer. We didn't really talk about this and I don't want to spend too long on it, but a custom swatch allows you to paint things and then it's just kind of set once, if that makes sense. The difference being this, if we were to, for say, use a swatch, one of the regular swatches here, and then I decide to change that color. So I'll just save this one, but just let's say we made it brown. It changes the foundation to brown, brown retroactively. So if you applied that to loads of machines and lots of different things, and then you changed it in here, it would change everything after the fact. So if you use a custom swatch, it's just one and done. I can change the custom swatch now and it doesn't change. So that allows me to kind of use lots of colors 
without really affecting anything else, if that makes sense. So if you want to go back to normal, just the fix it foundation is what we have. If you right click them, you can actually apply them as standard to certain things. So this is our pipeline swatch, concrete, etc., etc. right? And you can change how you kind of do that to your own discretion. So let's just climb up here. We've got two more miners to put down. I don't think I'm going to be able to make it, actually. Oh, oh my god, yes. Thank Blade Runners for that. So these two could just slam right in here. Alright, so that's all of the miners in position. Now we're going to work on the smelters. So that should be straightforward enough. Let's just climb up here to get, again, a bit of a bird's eye view on things. We'll select our smelter. They're going to be facing out towards that direction. I guess I didn't list that in the uh, thing. It's going to lock that in place for a second. We'll hop down. So, we want to go with the center of a foundation. It's This isn't, like, extremely important. This is totally fine either way, but I would probably aim it this way. So, the front legs going over the vents, the back legs tucked in just been on the vents, and then the input on the line, if that makes sense. So, that's the way I would do it. All right, so that's one right there. So, we're just going to have to do the same now. So, it'll line up relatively nicely in the center, at least, but then we just have to make sure it is aligned. Yep, that seems right. Good. All right, these ones go in a line together, so they should be a bit quicker. All right, just one more after this. All right, so all the smelters are in place. We just want to select iron ingots for these, obviously. Copy the settings, and then we'll just paste them onto every machine. Now, it's worth mentioning while we're doing this that... This is an early game modular frame factory. We're only targeting 6.66 per minute. It's really not that much in the grand scheme of things, but this is an early game factory. We're using impure nodes on purpose. Just trying to use a little bit of the area around our initial hub and stuff so we don't have to go too far. Because I noticed that this is just one of the ingredients we're missing that I didn't automate with iron. We got everything else, but we didn't really give ourselves any modular frames, and I ate up all of the extra... Excuse me. Oh my god getting nervous. Uh, we ate up all the extra screws we produced with our other production line, so I just thought it would be worth bringing that back in so that we have it ready at our disposal to go forward. But in future, a place like this probably be torn down because it is going to be relatively small compared to what we'll be doing later on. But I didn't want to run before we could walk again with something like this. All right, so that's our miners in position and our smelters in position. We'll do the logic of the belts later. So we'll just mark that off. The next one is constructors. So this should be pretty simple, right? We'll just grab another watchtower. Pop it down somewhere like there. And I'll put the first one down first. So these are super easy to do, thankfully, because they fit on foundations perfectly. At least from left to right. From back to front, not so much. You will have to just shift it over one. So they creep over the edge at the front and at the back. And that's how you know they're lined up correctly. Let's do something like that. And then we'll just hold control and make sure they're all kind of aligned with each other. Sorry, get some distance. All right, and we'll just do the same for over here. All right, that's all our constructors now in position. We haven't given them their ingredients or the recipes yet or anything like that. We'll do that in a moment. I want to do the assemblers next. These ones can be a little tricky uh, to line up. So we'll just get some vantage point here. So we got five assemblers that we need to build. The first one, we're going to tuck it right in at the edge there. And the next one, hold control and put it down next to its buddy. So I think that should put this in line straight up with one of the inputs just like that okay so that's what we're looking for the center of one of these constructors should be going straight into that one i don't think the center aligns with any of the others so it should be easy to spot which ones if it's in the correct position or not um so the next three then are again a little bit more awkward so i think we want to align ourselves basically here and just come forward but yeah think about there and then put three down so that basically means that we're in line with the edge of the foundation uh assemblers are just shy of being two foundations long so they're just in a little bit and then we just build two 
just gonna put down a little note here and say I'm not 100% sure about the placement of these. Nothing crazy would have to change if we change it, but just don't hook up any belts or anything yet. Just we haven't figured that out fully. Hey, quick heads up from editor Darren here. You want to move that assembler over by one grid space. I think that's in total one meter. So a foundation is eight meters across, just one foundation. Just want to move it one meter over so that the left side of the assembler, that kind of metal bar that runs along it, should be sitting on the vent of the foundation. All right, so that's all of our machines now in place. So the last few things to add is just the storage containers. So to do this, we need eight storage containers. Just gonna keep it on the line. So the hologram box for this, keep it on the line, on the seam of the foundation right next to the constructors here. Uh, so I think that's center aligned, right? Yeah. So just do the same for all of these. So another one there. And facing out towards those miners. And then we'll just pop another one on top, but rotate it around. Don't have to do that, but I feel like we'll probably need the space in the future. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, so that is all of the machines in place. The miners, into the smelters, into the constructors, to the assemblers, and finally, the storage containers. With all the foundations in place now, the real fun begins. That was the easy stuff. Now we have to hook it all up together, power it on, and make sure everything's running flawlessly. So, logistics is next, and I purposefully didn't tell you what any of these machines do. We have a flow diagram to help us with a bit more of the complexity of this build. Of course, you can go check this diagram out for yourself, download it, save it, whatever, at whatdarnplays.com slash satisfactory. If you like that, like the video. Who, you know, who am I to tell you what to do? You know, I would. It's, you know, it seems like a lot of effort, so I'd probably reward that with something. I don't know. Or a subscription, maybe. See if you can hit that 100k before the end of the year. Uh, so, let's have a look. What we're going to start off with is these constructors and work out where everything's going to go. So very simply, one of the great rules about this place is because we're using impure nodes, they only put out 30 iron ore per minute. And the smelters take 30 iron ore per minute, which means every miner has one companion smelter. So it's very simple. It's one to one in that regard. We're not doing any overclocking. We're not splitting the ore. It's all going to be pretty straightforward. So what we're going to do is just discount that, because that'll be simple and come a bit later. And we're going to start working on the smelter to the constructor layer of this build. And we're going to go by one smelter at a time, because that'll just make things a bit easier. So the very first one is going to go straight into its companion constructor right in front of it. And we're going to set this to be iron plates. Super simple. All right, so smelter, 30 iron ingots in. 30 is needed, 20 iron plates comes out, and then we just send it straight into here. So we just go align it, bring it back by two, and then just send it in. So that's that, that couldn't be any easier. 20 iron plates, done. All right, next up is gonna be one, two, three, and four. These four, which I'm actually just gonna paint yellow so we can see which ones we're working with, are all gonna be doing iron rods. I know, I know, you can copy and paste, I know. <laughs> All right, so four machines there with iron rods. So we'll just get a little bit of height on this again, actually. And then we'll hook up them to their respective smelters. So what we'll need to do is split it. So we'll choose a splitter, aim it facing, you know, with its input coming out from the uh, smelter. And we'll do the same with this one over here. And then we'll just bring a belt straight into it and belt that in there. Bring this to the middle, across by two, and then in. Nice right angle, right? So, one smelter, splitter, two constructors. Very simple. We'll do that again over here. Well, it seems simple, doesn't it? But then that happens. Cool. All right, so they're all doing iron rods. Now, these guys are a little bit more complicated. Their logistics, we have to do a little bit of load balancing. So what we'll start off with is a merger here, facing out, right? So we're facing it out that way. This one is going to be a splitter. I think this one is a merger. <laughs> Just have to double check on that, but pretty sure. And then this one's a merger as well. Yeah, so this merger, actually, I placed it wrong. It is a merger, but it has to be aiming to the right, okay? So the output has to go to the right, into there. 
All right, so let's start to hook these up. So this can go in there. There. All right, so all of our constructors are hooked up to their initial things. So what's going to happen here is we've got 15 rods per minute are coming out of these four constructors each, right? And we need to get 20 on one belt. So I'm going to send this splitter over to the left and over to the right and over to the right. So a splitter has, you know, three outputs and it divides equally. So 15 in means five to the left, five to the right, and five out the front, which is also going back in here. So we're sending 10 out that way. We're sending five to the left. Super simple. So this five, this uh, now 20, because it's 15 plus the five, are going to go into another storage container right in the front. Super simple. So that's this guy done. But we still have these three, which have other things to do. All right, so just to go over these numbers again, because I feel like it can get kind of messy when you're down on the ground looking at it. But from up high, it's a little easier to see. So we have four constructors here, each doing iron rods at 15 per minute. We've got the second one over here is going straight into a splitter. It's the only one going into a splitter. So this splitter is branching off three ways. So it's sending five away on each belt. So five is going off to the left. So if we look at this, it's 15 plus the five, that's 20. So 20 goes off into that storage container. The other five goes this way and the other five goes around and merges in as well. So now we're gonna combine this and send it over. So 5, 5, plus 15, because that's coming out of here, that's going to be 25, plus another 15 is going to be 40. And then that 40 is going to travel on straight somewhere else, which we'll deal with in a little bit of time. It's going to go to these uh, uh, assemblers, excuse me. We're not quite there yet. All right, let's keep working our way down the line to see what's next. All right, down the line, we have one, two, and three more constructors that are all going to be set to iron plates. So three of them being set to iron plates. And then very simply, we're just going to bring them one to one with the smelters that are right behind them. No big deal there. Very simple. Yep, just these three. One, two, and three. Okay, so three smelters straight into three constructors, all doing iron plates. So what these guys are going to have is a merger facing towards me. So out away from this area, right in line with that assembler. That is perfect. That's where we want it to be. And we're in the middle of the foundation, just making sure. Uh, no, we're not. Now we are. Yep. All right. So let's do that. And then we'll just feed these straight in. So one, two. All right. And then we could just send this straight into there, just for now. We're going to change it a little bit in a moment. But just send it straight along. We're going to need this belt eventually. So that's going to be a total of 60 traveling along this way that's then going to get divided into these two machines all right next on down the line we have the iron rods again so it's going to be four lots of iron rods so one two three and four so similarly to the other grouping that we had earlier they need their splitter in the middle so smelter goes in there, line comes out, feeds it into another constructor. This will feed it in as well. And then we just do the same over here. Splitter. All right, so just to get a bit more of a clean view. Again, just same sort of thing, right? So one smelter into two constructors, one smelter into two constructors, all doing rods. So that should be straightforward. So we've got a row of two foundations in front of us. So what we could do here now is start with a merger aiming out away from me, right? So it's aiming out towards there. And then all of the other ones are going to be aiming to the left. And they all just need a merger in front of them. Just like so. And then we just feed these all along. A belt of 60 should be totally fine, but you can make it a Mark II belt if you want. All right, so next up, we'll go with a splitter, and we want it to be in the middle, but we want it to be actually angled the right way. Yep. 
And you get the idea, right? We're just going to split as, as a manifold all the way along these extra constructors here. So these are going to be doing screws. That's the idea. Uh, you can also put the belt down first and then put the splitters on them. I always like doing it this way. I don't know. It's just like a habit of mine. But I guess it can be a little finicky sometimes. Is that right? We're not getting it. There we go. Couldn't see the green line. All right. So we just hook all of these up now. Again, just to get a little bit of height on this. All right, there we are. So four constructors all doing iron rods, all feeding into mergers that then go around in a sort of a, a line, basically a curved line that then manifold style feeds all of these extra constructors here. Uh, so they're going to be doing screws. So we can assign these all to screws. We'll just set the... We'll copy and paste these settings, because there's quite a few of them. Six machines in total, all doing screws. And there we go. So they take in 10 rods per minute, and they put out 40 screws. So effectively, with our four iron rods, right? It's four times 15. That's going to be 60. One, two, three, four, five, six. Each doing 10 per minute. That's 60. So we're one to one, hopefully. All right. So what's next? We have to then figure out how to get these guys to combine. Now, because they put out 40, our best belt is 120, so we can only merge three at a time. So let's do that. So we'll put a merger right in front of maybe this one in the middle of the foundation, aiming straight forward. Yeah, aim it straight forward. That's good. In fact, I'm going to pop it down here, not in the middle. So we're going to aim this one to the left. And we don't actually need one there, so we'll just grab this belt. Bring it back by two, and then feed it into that merger. This can go into that merger, that can go into there, that can go into there, and now we can go straight. So what we're going to need to do is basically, at the assemblers now, we fed in the iron plates line. And that's totally fine, but somewhere in the middle here, we want a splitter. So we'll hold, maybe I'll just put one here, and then I can hold control and it should just snap in. There we go. Get rid of that one now. Right, so now we're just aligned with the center of the foundation. Just if you want to be, you don't have to be, but I like to. And we're going to bring this across. Now you could feed it into that node there, but I, I like to put them into the same places. As I'm sure a lot of people do. All right, so let's just bring this out to there. One, two. Bring that in. So now our 60 iron rods are being divided equally between two assemblers. And then we want to get a batch of 120 screws from here over to there uh, but we want to raise it so we're going to bring these up like so and I guess um, so some people say like you know these attach on I think they look ridiculous attached on I much prefer it to be out I say that as like so insulting to people who think it looks good or something but I just don't think it looks right when it's just sitting on top of it like that because it doesn't leave any room for the resource to kind of come down. It comes through the object, if that makes sense. So it looks weird to me. But it, you're right, it does snap on. What I usually do is I just cut the belt underneath or whatever. And just work out where it needs to be. So, to be honest, we don't even need one there, thinking about it. We only needed one here. But that's just what I would do in future. So, something like this. That alignment is where we need to be. So that's the center of the foundation. It's going to get rid of this. That one can stay. All right, we can put this back on now. Right, so it's taking it straight in. And then this can just go straight in like that. Ah, but we end up with this problem. So, to avoid this problem, what you can do is go like this. And instead of attaching the lift from the machine onto the splitter, we'll attach it from the splitter onto the machine. And that way, we're left with something a bit better. But now we're inconsistent. Right, that has a hose, and that doesn't, because this does, and that doesn't. So I'm just going to do the opposite, right? We're just going to do this. And now we're, you know, the same. Alright, so they're connected in together, and they're reconnected again. 
So very simply, <laughs> that was the worst way of doing it ever, but we've got two splitters. And again, we don't actually even need that one, so we can get rid of this. And now we should be able to feed in with a nice right angle into there without it really being a problem. Kind of looks like it clips over the edge of it, but that's fine. I'm going to be hypocritical. It's fine. Uh, so yeah, all right, we'll leave it like that. So that's 60 iron rods coming in, or sorry, iron plates coming in this way. And now we have an area here where we have to figure out how to get them what they need. So put on this, raise it up to there, bring that out. And how good is that? Real good. Perfect. Smooth. Okay, so that's going to be our 120. But eagle-eyed viewers will know that it's not quite 120 yet. We have to upgrade our belt here. Upgrade it here. And might as well just upgrade it there as well, even though we don't actually need to, but we'll do that anyway. And then we also need to upgrade this to be Mark II. It's very simple. So that's 120 resources per minute that they can handle. Now in the assemblers, we're going to be making reinforced iron plates. They need 60 screws per minute. So a uh, Mark I lift is perfect because it does 60 per minute. All right, we'll just assign this to be the same. So 60 per minute, 30 iron plates. And if you remember earlier, we had 20, 20, and 20 merging onto a belt of 60. That's been split evenly between the two. So that's also now one to one. So that's perfect. So what about these three? Alrighty, so you might be wondering, what are we going to do with the final three constructors over here? They've been sent to screws, but we don't have any machines that are actually going to need them. Instead, we're just going to send them over to our storage container just over there, mainly because we don't make any screws. So I thought it'd be good just to have some that are piling up in the background so we could do something with them in the future, or if you needed them for some recipe or something, I don't know. Just nice to be producing a bit of everything, I think. Okay, so in order to get this done, we'll just set up mergers. We don't actually need one there, but we do need one here. Uh, facing out away from me. Uh, same one here. Alright, and then we'll just grab a belt. Bring this in. Send that in. Send that in. And then this one is going to go up and over. And that is a Mark II. It needs to be a Mark II. This will... I can't actually remember. We'll just make that a Mark II belt as well, just in case. Alright, cool. Yep, nice. We're just going to go straight out now. So in order to guide our path a little bit more effectively, I think if we stop somewhere like here and turned, that would do well for us. Now, maybe we don't need to use a splitter. We could probably just use a, what is it called? A conveyor stackable pole or just even a regular stackable or a regular pole. But I like the stackables. So just lock that in place. That looks good to me. Put another one on top. So we're going to drag out this guy, Mark II, out of his mind. All right. So what we'll need to do now is get... So we need to go one, two. I think there. So that was two in from the input there and two out from the turn point here. So that allows us just to do this. Nice right angle. And this could go all the way into the top, which would be weird. I want to bring it down to the bottom and then feed it to the top, which I think makes more sense. I mean, it just keeps it consistent with the others. But what we'll have to do is just bring this along to pretty much right in front of it. Maybe, yeah, just the middle point here is good. Just, so just join this on. All right, and now the Mark II lift can come down, rotate around, and feed in. All right, so that's that done. So that's our 120 screws coming from over on that side. So that's pretty much all the constructors are hooked up now, I think. It's now just the assemblers. Oh, there's still some actually over there that aren't done just yet. Um, okay, yeah, so the final assemblers. So in order to get these done, we have these two assemblers are making reinforced iron plates five per minute. These ones are going to be doing our modular frames. So modular frames require three reinforced iron plates per minute and 12 iron rods per minute. So what I'm going to have to do is find some power shards. We need three. We're doing a little bit of overclocking for the assemblers. Only a very small amount. So I've left some here. Just need three. So we've got four. And we're going to clock these to 111.1111 recurring forever. So... 
Let's throw in one shard each. So it's one 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 point one 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 one. So that's what we get. Alright, copy those settings, apply them to the other one, and it actually takes the um, power shard out of your inventory when you do that, so it's already put one in, so that's a nice quality of life feature. Alright, so now we'll just have to, um, yeah, bring these two over and send them into their buddy there. So this belt here can continue all the way along. Just drag it all the way out, whatever. Just to somewhere like there. And these are going to be sent in. So, by the way, I meant to show you, if you have a look now at the numbers, the iron rods require 13.333 recurring. So 13.333333, whatever, times 3, because we have 3 of them, is 39.99999. So, what are we making? We're making 40 rods, and that's why we did that load balancing there, so we could send 40 rods along this belt. So, there will be a slight rounding error, eventually, where you're making 0 0.00001 extra rod per minute. But I'm sure it'll be okay. So we'll get a splitter to go here. Splitter to go here. And that's a tricky one. Because it's latching to a different machine. Oh man, that sucks. That's doing that. Oh, actually, we don't need a splitter on the end. So that's fine. <laughs> Alright. Cool. Okay, so the other thing then is going to be having inputs for our modular frames to go into. So they'll need to pretty much be raised and then go into these guys. Uh, so we'll follow the center of the foundation because it always kind of makes sense doing that. Uh, we'll have a splitter here. We're going to do it manifold style as well. And then these will connect together just like that. And uh, yeah, we can bring this down to the ground if you want. Bring this out to the middle points. Now, everything seems to be... I don't understand. That's facing the wrong way somehow. Oh, the input's the wrong way around. Damn it. Didn't notice that. Alright, there we go. So now our input's correct. Alright, bring that back to the center. Uh, we'll just bring it along here. Are we center aligned? I think we are. Yep. And then one merger. And that should be the final thing. So that's it. That is that is all the logistics hooked up now. Alright, so to make things a little bit more simple, we have our 40 iron rods coming along this belt here, being divided up into three assemblers. That's 39.999 is the consumption rate for those things. We then have 10 reinforced iron plates coming out of these two assemblers being sent around and up and being divided then into every assembler and I think it needed 9.999 so we're again left with a tiny tiny little extra bit of reinforced iron plates and that's pretty much it that's all the logistics done now for every machine except for the miners being fed over into the uh, what's it called the smelters so the way we do that is kind of interesting so what we'll do is we'll grab a wall with two conveyor holes place it there 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 and there that gives us eight holes <laughs> right so the first one we'll start here and just send it right into its buddy pretty much oh actually we have to go forward just a tiny bit i don't know what oh um i, I don't know what it's doing so let me just go like this and nudge it because it's trying to snap back onto itself. But anyway, there it goes. So that's in there. Easy peasy. This next one is just going to flow along and go into its respective machine. So the gap is pretty substantial between these two. And again, we can just go one, two. Pop that in. And you get the idea, I think. We're just going to do this for every row, pretty much. Alright, so that is the first three walls with floor holes all lined up. Now, the fourth one is obviously strange right it's because it's not supposed to be there the other two miners are here so they don't actually go through the wall holes they're just going to go into their uh smelters their own way so this one's obviously super easy we'll just rotate it to face it out correctly send that straight in and then this one is going to loop around the back of the other one so again just bring it to the seam line maybe just rotate it a little bit bring it in by two just make sure it's 90 degree there we go feed this up and along about to there. Uh, 
and there we go. All right, so that creates a nice, nice little row of belts all flowing evenly spaced away from each other into a series of smelters. All right, I'm back with some extra materials. I realized that a couple of my belts were a little off, so they're corrected now. They're straight, so let's get back to it. So effectively, we need to bring these four miners into these four holes. That's what we got to do. I was connecting it to the wrong one, actually. We need to bring it in here and there. So let's get this. We'll just drag it straight out. Line it up with there. One, two. Just rotate to make sure it's aligned. And send it in. The next one is going to be coming from here. So again, if we could get as far over there as possible. Well, I tell you what. Actually, probably a better way of doing it is just figuring out exactly where we need to be. So it's one, two. I think there. That'll send us in. So we could line up even here. Yeah. And then the final one will just be, again, so one, two. Same gap all the way around. That just should make things look a little nicer. Yeah, cool. All right, so we'll just extend this, and we're just going to bring it into its buddy over here. A little bit of an awkward one. I think if we go along here, though, we'll be fine. Yeah, that's pretty good. All right, so this just travels along and goes into that one. All right, we've got two more to do. So again, just keeping that general rule, though. You want to keep them kind of spaced. Uh, so just bring this, again, we'll just bring it to maybe something like even here. Just travel that along. Uh, yeah. So I know that it wants to come down this line, basically, so... One, two. Alright, and this is, this is keeping our spacing even the whole way. Super important. Uh, Alright, so let's bring this to here. Bring it forward as best we can until it likes what I'm doing. So I would say something like there then. So we're aiming for this spot. One, two. We go in. Continue along. Right, I think that basically puts us even space the whole way around. I know it's a bit squiggly there. You can do whatever you want with that, but I'm happy enough with it. Like, just keep it all tucked in together and then keep the spacing, like, pretty even all the way throughout. The last part we'll be doing upstairs. So, in order to get this lined up, it's really simple, actually. We'll just have to get a wall with two floor holes, or wall holes there. Bring down the uh, conveyor lift just here. Rotate round. And just send it straight in. Couldn't be easier than that. Alright, and then we'll just go upstairs again real quickly and just make sure we line up those miners with those wall holes. So again, I would just rotate and push it back as far as it can go and then you get a nice, pretty nice straight line anyway then as it goes into the thing. So again, we're lining up with here. I just want to make sure that that's okay. It's a bit weird, so let's just push it forward. There we go. Alrighty, there we go. So that is everything now belted up. Looking damn good. And then I think we should fire it on. And then we could do some of the cosmetics as the place is like coming online. So I guess power is the next thing. So what I'm going to do for power is going to be a little awkward. All right, so for the power poles, you'll notice that we have the actual power connectors on various machines. I'm just going to put the poles pretty much as close on the foundation as we can to that. So every machine that needs one has a power pole that goes right next to it. So we're going to have one pretty much every foundation. Every foundation in a line, and then if there's a gap, we leave a gap, and so on and so forth. All right, we are all hooked up to power. All that's left to do now is just turn this place on and try to make it look a little bit better. So just going to toggle off logistics and then we're gonna see how we did all right so I've dragged the power feed let's just make sure everything's working correctly oh yes consumption is still even production not faltering love to see it 
So where do we hook this bad boy up? Uh, there's one over there, so I guess we'll just hook it up to that area. Alright, so we are online. So of course the iron has to actually make its way out first, then we go into the smelters, then we go into the constructors, and so on and so forth. And we'll check its efficiency ratings all the way to make sure everything is working as intended. But while we're waiting, I'm just going to start slapping on some walls. So the way I plan on doing the cosmetics is doing two walls of four meters and then a little two walls of one meter each and then we could paint those to be a little different and somewhere here even just temporarily right now I'm just gonna put in a doorway so it's gonna be our way in and our way out we're gonna need a way to get up there so again wall here yeah that just gives a little bit more I mean the height is a little off of the place that's why we kind of need to do that how we looking looking good First batches are rolling in. Nice. And we'll just see this affecting our network over time. I just want to make sure they're all on. Oh no, they're not. They're not. The other miners aren't on yet. I must have forgot to connect this to that. There we go. Got yellow lights and then we have the green lights. Nice. At least everything's on now. But yeah, we have those gaps on the belts just because it's doing 30 per minute and the belts are 60 per minute, right? So we have these really evenly spaced gaps between everything. Looks nice, though. Uh, Alright, let's just I'm just going to continue putting the walls on this place. I just realized as I was doing the wall for this place that I haven't done the logistics for the actual modular frames. And we're actually producing some, so... All we have to do for that is pretty simple. We just drag the belt straight into the... Hopefully this is straight, is it? Yes. Uh, we just drag it straight into the storage container uh, right in front of it. That's been placed in front of it, which is still centralized. And then, uh, yeah, just create a, a, a list of... A line of mergers, I guess, that goes into it. Um, so, merger, we'll just place it somewhere in the center of the foundation, I guess. Right there, and that allows us to snap in. Grab this one. All right, and there we have it. Oh my god. There's actually a few. Quite a few going along. Our first modular frames automated. Now flowing. Oh, I haven't actually hooked up their, um, their elevators yet either. There we go. Now this one, which is the one that's doing screws? It's this one. That'll need to be um, Mark II. Nice! Alright, look at this! There's our four containers. So if we come into this factory and we ever want to get any of our things, we just have to run up to these four containers. So I'm going to build like a kind of a walkway system that leads straight over to them, basically. All right, ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. This is going to be how I'm going to leave the factory for now. So I'm not doing anything to do with the floor yet, and I'm not putting a roof on it or anything like that. I don't have any of the cosmetics that I want for that. I need glass tiles and a few other things, pillars, uh, metal beams, those kind of things to add a bit of trim. You can make things look quite nice really simply. You could spend forever making things look really good, but I'm going to try to achieve that just hopefully slightly a little bit nicer than average nicer than this in future but for now we don't have any of that stuff unlocked so i'll just show you what i've done we've got our wall here four meter four meter then two one meters then four meter four meter four so that's 22 meters in total the door has been moved over it's a bit more centralized now i couldn't tell you exactly how far <laughs> maybe when we go in I'll, i could tell you um, but then I also just added the wall over to the edges here so it kind of looks like one seamless building going all the way across uh, as we encroach back in, we have our walkway here. So one, two, three leads up with a little ramp after a small break. This area then leads into our raised miners. So we've got two miners up here. Is this painted black? Oh, it is. It's done that by mistake. We have our two raised miners up here, shoveling their ore out down the lifts, which are guarded in case we were to fall down this hole. If we look out over Isengard, we can see what we've created with a little tear in our eye. <laughs> as everything looks quite good although we've got a flashing machine over there I don't like to see that let's check out what's up with that one um, yeah so another little area to kind of stand proudly and look over everything and then we have another one down here which comes down just one stairwell and then we're out to another sort of platform to look over things uh, it looks like it's just the manifold still 
taken effect. That's all it is. Um, yep, so we can kind of look out over here. Then we are down the ramp to actually engage with our storage containers. So we can actually access them from up here if we wanted to. So they're filling up nicely already. We've got about 150 modular frames now. So I reckon we'll just take these. And we should be good to start with our milestones. The very last thing would just be, again, around this corner, we have the same sort of staircase we had on the way in, which just takes you back up. Uh, so you can kind of add this walkway all the way around. That's probably what I would do, and add some ways down every now and then, or some other times where we come down and get close to machines. I was thinking of bringing that walkway all the way over to the other side, but it kind of felt a bit bad covering the machines. But again, it would probably make practical sense to do that. Um, and because we're all on a foundation, we're all lined up, everything should be pretty easy to do. I'll probably put a doorway somewhere over there, another one over there. Haven't fully decided, because for now, we're really just going to be running back and forth out this way. So, not that big of a deal. And for the most part, I'm just going to be accessing these storage containers. So that's why I wanted a walkway that just takes me up and over to it very quickly. Uh, one last thing would probably be a door somewhere up here. Just that leads out this way, because... You know, we don't have to go down too far to get out this way. So, again, uh, instead of a ramp, I like to build a little walkway before I get the ramp. Because the ramp coming off the door can just look a bit strange. Normally, things would have a little way in first. So, there we go. Alright, let's take our newfound modular frames and let's do some milestones to wrap this bad boy up. Okay, so the first milestone I'm looking at here is jump pads. So we can get a jump pad and U-Jelly landing pad, so that allows you to softly land without um, taking damage, although it has to be powered, which is kind of annoying. Uh, so we'll select that milestone. I'm just going to do what we've done before, which is toss in everything now. But don't hit that button. We're going to go back to selecting milestone. That's going to be tier 2 complete. Vehicular transport. So it looks like I'm going to be short on a few things. So I'm just going to check on a few of these, and then I'll load them up and we'll continue. Alright, so after filling everything up that we need in Tier 2 and Tier 3. So Tier 2, jump pads, we saw that before, but that's 50 rotors, 300 plates, 150 cable. Easy. Vehicular transport is going to be 25 modular frames, 100 rotors, 200 cable, and 400 iron rod. Next one over, <coughs> losing my voice, is um, basic steel production, 50 modular frames, 150 rotors, 300 concrete, and 1,000 wire. Easy. And then lastly, we have our improved melee combat, which is going to be 100 reinforced iron plates, 200 cable, and a 1500 wire. So we're going to click all of these buttons. Why can't I click that? It's not letting me. Uh-oh. Select the milestone. Let's reset this. It might be getting confused because we're looking at all these different things. All right. Boom. Melee combat. Done. Next up. Boom. Vehicles. Boom. And basic steel. Boom. So that is a lot of stuff that we've just gained access to very, very quickly. Ada doesn't even have time to tell us about everything. Alright, autosave's done. So I'm just waiting for her to be quiet. There's so much for her to talk about, I guess, because it's... Okay, that's it. So, let's have a look. We've got foundries. Whoops. Inside power, nothing. Logistics, all good. Organization, foundations. Is that it? Did we just unlock foundries? No, we have transport, of course. Truck stations, tractors, jump pads, and U-Jelly landing pads. That should allow us to get around a little bit quicker. All right, so I was just taking a look at what we're going to need in future. So effectively, for Tier 4, we're going to start with advanced steel production. So we're going to be setting up steel at the beginning of the next episode. That's going to be what that one's focused on, how to set up steel. And with that, we should be able to complete a lot of these milestones because it just needs a very small amount of steel in each of them. Really not that much. A little bit of steel pipe, some steel beams. That's basically it because we're making everything else already. So we should be able to complete Tier 4 in the next episode straight up. Shouldn't really take too long at all. Um, so yeah, so that's going to give us access to Miner's Mark 2 and Logistics Mark 3, which gives us Belts of Mark 3, which allows us to significantly boost our power network, which we don't need to. I mean, look at it. The place is running like a dream right now. 2400 production, 790 consumption. We still have, you know, 1400 or whatever to go, even more. So loads of power overhead for our steel facility to be made. All right, that's going to have to be it for this episode. Hope everyone enjoyed it. Look forward to seeing the feedback on the comments. This place seemed to work without any do-overs, so 
I'll be excited to see how people get on. Oh, and lots of people have been in my Discord posting their versions of my builds, which is so cool to see. I don't know why I never really thought about that, but people who are building along are actually there. You can see them. <laughs> That's quite cool. And see their different takes on things, because they'll change and do a bit more with the cosmetics, which is what I love to see. I kind of show you the build, the layout, how to get the logic working, and then people are spending a little bit of the extra time in the week, I guess, to make it look pretty. So it's really cool to see that. All right, that's going to have to be it for me. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.